Hey guys, Static here, and today on Dungeon Guide we're going to be covering Veteran Hard Mode Elden Hollow 1. After defeating the mobs in the first room, you'll come to this long waterfall. It doesn't really serve any purpose other than I think they thought it looked cool, so they left it in the game. It should be mentioned though that near the end of this corridor, there's going to be a little corner where quest givers will appear, and if you run too quickly, you run past them before they actually appear. So make sure if you need the quest in this area, that you stop and make sure you pick them up. This dungeon has the typical mob layout with the exception of Dragon Knights, which can drop these standards. They can also chain you in. So just try and stay out of these standards. The rest of the mobs just include archers with volleys and arrow sprays, and also the healers that can be bashed. These stranglers, however, are the bane of my existence. If one gets aggroed off to the side, they can rip you all the way across the room and really mess with your flow of things. So if I see that one gets aggroed, I like to burn them down immediately. This boss starts out with light and heavy attacks. His next move will be a conal, which your tank wants to point away from your group. He also does a spin attack, so just stand outside of the red AoE. You'll see after this heavy attack that he does a jump to a random player. He jumps at Wiko and she does the right thing by moving immediately, because he'll oftentimes use his conal right after. So just have your tank chase down the boss and then reposition to point it away from the group again and repeat the process. After defeating this boss, there's a cave to your right. This is where the next boss is. It's not needed for a pledge, but for a no death or speed run, you need to go this way. This boss is surrounded by a bunch of regular Spriggans. They just have conal attacks, but they melt pretty quickly. The next thing this boss does is summon this thunder bug. This bug generally just soaks up damage and gets in the way. Similar to the regular Spriggans, this boss will have a conal attack. This is his last mechanic. At this point in the dungeon, you'll start coming across these elites. All they really do are heavy attacks, which are their jump that your tank just needs to block. Chokethorn has a few mechanics. His main one being when he tucks down into the ground, he'll have a big red AoE come out from around him that you need to get out of as it's a one shot for a lot of people. The next thing he will do is he will summon these stranglers. Now these ones aren't going to rip you around or anything like the others in this dungeon, but they will heal him. So it's a good idea to dot them up and get them burning down so it's a lot easier to kill him in the long run. Leaving one strangler up isn't going to be the end of the world as you can out damage the healing they do, but if you ignore enough of them, he'll have four and five stranglers on him and then it starts to become a problem. If you watch our tank here, you'll see Chokethorn's last mechanic. Chokethorn himself actually does rip people in with the vines. A lot of times he'll do this right before doing his red AoE, so be careful and be ready for it. Always be ready to dodge roll out of that AoE. If you have the quest for this dungeon, make sure you examine this blue shrine as it's a quest objective. It's easy to get caught up in burning the trash down here and then forget to actually complete that objective before you move on to the next boss. I feel like I'm looking into a mirror here as this boss is a stamina orc sorcerer. His first attack is an AoE lightning explosion. This is actually a channeled ability, and if you can get a bash off on him, it will interrupt. Other than the typical light and heavy attacks, this boss's last mechanic is entering a boundless storm. This just gives him passive AoE damage. This attack should be a hurricane, but unfortunately, that wasn't in the Stamsorks toolkit at the time of this dungeon creation. After you defeat him, make sure you turn around and use the tunnel behind you as it leads to the next boss. For this boss, I would recommend if you have a weaker group to fight him right here in the corner. If you want to make the big boy pull, you can run down this hallway and pull all of the elites as you'll have to face them eventually anyways. Just make sure you have the heals and DPS to burn everything down. This boss is really just a glorified elite himself. All he really does is his heavy attack which is the jump attack. Same thing as the small elites. The only exception to this is the boss will eventually reposition himself and then do a conal attack. These are his only mechanics. Don't forget as you enter the room to your right to read the scroll to activate hard mode. 
Don't get fooled by the beginning of this fight. It may feel like it's going to be a tank and spank, but there's a lot more than meets the eye here. Her first move is to summon this portal underneath a random player which will CC you and have zombies come out of it. The next is her giant AoE which will be a one shot for most players. She will lastly throw a ball of disease at a random player. Now this disease ball can be blocked or dodge rolled but it's very quick and she doesn't have much of a tell for it. The interesting thing about this ball is as the fight goes on it will start doing more and more damage. So the longer you're in this fight it could really start being a problem. The key to this fight is really just staying focused on her. The adds that come up out of the ground don't do a whole lot of damage, so don't get too distracted. They'll melt pretty quickly. So focus maximizing damage on her, getting out of her AoE, and mitigating the length of this fight so those disease balls don't start to become a problem. Thanks for checking out the video guys. Please smash that like and subscribe button below for future content releases. I really appreciate the support everybody's been showing me. So I want to just say thank you to each and every one of you. It really means a lot to me. See you guys later and catch you next time.